Uh, good afternoon, everybody. It uh, is my real pleasure to be here. First of all, because um, the DCO meetings, uh, I think for me, are truly scientific highlights. Uh, I learned so much. It is just incredible from uh, neighboring fields. But in this particular case, uh, um, there's also something else involved. And that is, I am uh, the speak spokesperson with uh, Kath, oops, that was, can we go back one? That was, I was, can, can we go back to the main slide? Yeah, uh, together with Catherine, uh, I'm the spokesperson um, of uh, a research unit in Germany, and uh, that research unit uh, would not have uh, existed without uh, DCO. Um, so already from this slide, you can see that uh, quite a few groups are um, involved in this effort. We are spread out all over Germany. And uh, I just uh, want to tell you a little bit about uh, how this came along, where we are, and where we plan to go. Um, so in up to about 2012, we had uh, what is called a priority project in Germany. I was a, a spokesperson of this, uh, and it was uh, focusing on metaid extreme conditions, uh, essentially high pressure studies. And afterwards, uh, we wanted to, to have a smaller research unit uh, that is typically about 10 PIs funded by the German Science Foundation uh, on carbonates. Because uh, not only at that time, but especially at that time, uh, these questions which we have seen, uh, oh man, uh, can we go back please? Uh, which, which we have seen before, um, they are still, of course, uh, um, very current. Uh, so we do know how the Earth is structured. We have a good idea on the pressure uh, distribution in the Earth. We have slightly worse uh, idea on the temperature <coughs> distribution. And, and there are exciting papers which uh, show on what uh, happens uh, to uh, carbonates. And, and so with our background in high pressure research, we wanted to contribute to this. So to, to request funding for a research unit in Germany, uh, it's a two-stage process. You submit uh, a short concept to the German Science Foundation, and then you get either, um, are either allowed to submit a full proposal or not. And in this case, we got a letter back saying, okay, the scientific ideas uh, are very, very nice. However, and that is on the next uh, uh, page, and it is a German, so the German Science Foundation said, well, there is a DCO in the US, and uh, please assure us that there is no duplication of effort. So uh, then I wrote to DCO, and uh, from uh, Bob Hazen, I got this super, super nice supportive letter. And that was what essentially then convinced the reviewers uh, to allow us to put in a full proposal, and actually, after three years, we were evaluated. This time, it was Craig Manning who wrote the super, super nice letter and helped us uh, get uh, um, to the second stage. And in fact, what we do, if you look at the Extreme Physics and Chemistry website, it says, study phase diagrams and thermal elasticity of carbonates and carbides at core mental boundary conditions. And this, in fact, is what we do. So, we got funding for this research unit, essentially over, it's two times three years. We have 16 projects. So due to DCO, really, we do have uh, funding for about 15 PhD students, five postdocs, uh, quite a few numbers of BSc and MSc theses. We, ha we have uh, funding for networking. We can invite people. We can send people to somewhere else. Uh, especially our students, uh, we, we, we send them to conferences, to other research facilities, and we can sponsor topical sessions at conferences. For example, there was this Young Earth Science Congress uh, just recently, and uh, one of our younger uh, early career scientists organized a session there. So this is uh, the, the formal aspects. Um, when you ask for funding for a research unit, you, you have to be very focused, okay? It, it has to be a, a very well-defined topic. So what we said essentially is we want to do high pressure, in situ high pressure studies of structures and properties 
of carbonates on well-defined synthetic systems. So we said, okay, first we want to really understand the, 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 the pure systems and then later we might extend it to natural samples. So essentially what we said is we have two tools. We can reach pressures and temperatures uh, up to those prevalent in the earth core by diamond anvil cells. So these are diamond anvil cells, they are this size and essentially we have seen this uh, before. You just squeeze the two diamonds together, put a sample in here, you can shine a laser light through this, heat it up, or, and at the same time, you can uh, essentially shine synchrotron light uh, through it or Raman do Raman spectroscopy or whatever. So you can reach very, very high pressures, very high temperatures on tiny, tiny, tiny samples, okay? The alternative is if you want to go to pressures, let's say not more than 25 GPA, that you just uh, use large volume presses. And um, this is essentially what we do. We have a very strong focus on methods developments. Essentially all PIs are involved in the development of technology. Some of this at synchrotrons, some of this in-house. Um, especially Leonid has developed, for example, a, a really magnific magnificent uh, laser heating setup so that you can do single crystal structure refinements in a diamond anvil cell at megabar pressure and a few thousand Kelvin, okay? And you have to remove the sample and, and so it is intricate, but he, he has done like some, something very nice. Uh, something which I like very much is the setup in Potsdam. If you want to look at melting in these large volume presses, you have to make sure that uh, your sample is thoroughly mixed, okay? And what they do is they just rotate the whole frame. Okay, and that of course then makes sure that uh, not something heavy drops to the bottom, but you essentially shake it. Um, Catherine uh, has been heavily involved in the development of uh, Merzbauer, uh, synchro um, synchrotron Merzbauer spectroscopy, and we do have something very unique. Uh, we have access to a, a cave in a mine, and in that mine, we can explode uh, 25 kilograms of uh, military explosive, which then generates about uh, 1.6 uh, megabar of pressure, and we actually can recover the samples nowadays. Uh, it took uh, the group uh, some time. The, the door of the chamber was blowing out regularly, but they have <laughs> fixed the problem now, and it actually works now. Um, so that is, that is fairly, fairly unique and, and very interesting. Um, and as I said, uh, I think all groups are um, interested in method development. As I said, what we do is we study phase diagrams at extreme conditions. And, and one very, very nice sample from uh, Valerio uh, was uh, on, on to study the high pressure behavior of siderite. Uh, and uh, interesting, there are very interesting things happening because uh, you, you have decomposition at low pressures, but you have charge disproportionation at high pressures. You have the formation of uh, tetracarbon, which I'll show right now. Uh, so an extremely rich and interesting physics. Uh, same thing here for, let's say, calcite. Um, it is for us relevant, the geotherm is here. So this is what, what is geo, geologically really relevant, yes? The geotherm is here, and, and, and in that study, uh, it was shown that a particular form of calcite is actually the stable form uh, across the geotherm. And so if this is the case, then the next question is, can we demonstrate that it really is? Can we calculate the elastic properties and show whether it uh, can be detected seismically or not? Or other phase diagrams uh, here on dolomite, um, where, where we look uh, at melting, uh, the spin transition, so electronic changes due to high pressure in, in this study, uh, or here again, uh, a phase diagram of dolomite. <clears throat> I said the, the interesting things, I'm a, by training, I'm a crystallographer, so I take, uh, this is especially dear to my heart. Um, I think the, 
when, when, when Marco Merlini and others uh, first showed uh, that you actually do get fourfold coordinate carbon. Uh, from a crystal chemical point of view, it, this is exciting. Okay, and, and then we, we later see that there's all kinds of things. You can get isolated CO4 groups, you can polymerize the CO4 groups, you, you can get rings. Uh, in, in other compounds, there's just a wealth of new structures. And especially, I think, the development in Bayreuth um, for the uh, determination of single crystal structures uh, at high pressures have brought us uh, very much forward. For us, the important thing is, of course, the, the, the crystal structures are one thing, uh, but the physical properties another. So what, where we really, really aim for is we want to see whether you can detect some phase transformation, some phase by seismic uh, measurements. And in this case, actually, this is for calcite 7, the transition from calcite 7, which I just showed. We can show that if you have 10% of calcite in a pyrolytic mantle, you should be able actually to see it. And there are actually indications that these, trans that th these discontinuities exist. All other things are just uh, to show you that we do do really exquisite measurements at extreme conditions with high accuracy. Okay, let me, because I was just told to shut up, essentially, take home message. We do have a research unit in Germany which uh, works on carbonates. Um, we have I, what I think are significant contributions to the phase diagrams, structures, method development, technology developments. We have funding for another 18 months and we certainly are always, always, always looking for opportunities for collaborations. And again, Carbopat would not have received funding uh, without the support of DCA, DCO. So I am personally really, really grateful to this. And so I'm sure is uh, my whole group and the whole research unit. Uh, and of course, all this is horribly expensive. So I would like to thank our other sponsors and I thank you for your attention. <laughs> Thank you very much. Are there questions? Okay, so I will ask my question. <laughs> and so because I have inside knowledge, I happen to know that one of the great advantages of such a collaborative center or research network is this, this the, the sample collection that there have been samples traded and so you can take the same sample and use many different techniques. So this is actually a resource. And is this a resource that could be uh, offered as part of collaborations? Absolutely. So actually, that was one of the uh, very gratifying experiences. So we, we, we meet every six months. And essentially, it is the PhD students who, who run the show. And after half a year, a year, uh, people then came up voluntarily and said, okay, I've synthesized these and these and these samples, who wants to have them? Or I do need this and this and this sample, uh, which group can provide it? And so we have really been exchanging, especially with Bayreuth, but also with other groups, lots of samples. And of course, first of all, we do have a really substantial set of extremely well characterized synthetic samples, some natural samples. And yes, should anybody be interested in samples for particular experiments, write to me and uh, we'll find it, we'll find a solution. Okay, thank you. I no, think no, we have a question. Yes, I was wondering, first of all, you guys have done some amazing work. This has really been transformational in our understanding of, of these, these extreme phases. But there's so much more to do you only have a year and a half of funding now. Is there any possibility of a renewal or do you have some other proposal in mind? Okay. Yes. Uh, it, it has a, a direct continuation is not possible, okay, because the, the research units are three plus three years and then it's over. However, uh, during, during the course of this work, people start to get to know each other and uh, there are some dynamics. And uh, a, a group, a subgroup of the, of the participants here, especially Max Wilke, have actually 
managed to get funding for a priority project on melts. Um, not particularly on carbonates, uh, other melts, but so, so it, it has moved on. But I think we are at the moment in the process of trying possibly another research unit on amorphous carbonates. Um, um, amorphous, because at the moment, for the last years, we have purely worked on uh, crystalline compounds. Uh, amorphous and glassy materials uh, would open a, a complete new field. And then I'll write to you again, and I probably need a very nice supporting letter again. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.